Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to episode 128. This week we go through a couple of surprising studies on things that will help you live longer that you would not expect. Uh, we also go through what's going on with WeHack Health, the couple of resources that I've been building out, what benefit that they would have to your life and where you can find them. And we also touch a little bit on how progress gets difficult and then gets easy on the other side and words from Dave at the end. So tune in and let us know if you enjoy. You know that there has had to have been some sacrifice, whether it's time or nutrition or whatever it is. A recording of myself talking about having a relationship with my chest. <laughs> I'm Ben Gunning. I'm Dave Kennedy. And this is Hacking Health Podcast. Welcome to episode 128. Uh, Dave's just had a bit of a rummage around his office there, searching for how to plug something in. So that's the day that, that we have got going on. What's going on, man? Yo, it's been a it's been a busy day. It's one of those days where like you don't have any meeting schedule, but then like everything comes into play where you mm -hmm. have as many things as you could possibly imagine pop up at, at once. All of the things. Yeah, I got like electricians coming in here and like everything else. I'm putting a, a Tesla charging station out at the Trusted Tech headquarters, and uh, it came with this like. Um, enclosure for it and the enclosure is just a smidge too small so it doesn't actually shut so i got to figure out how to like either 3d print um like my a new casing for it or come up with some concoction to allow me to do it so we'll we'll be figuring that out here uh later on but so that's uh, what the rest of your day looks like then well well actually yeah, right after this I, i'm going to pick up uh, my son's friend for uh for airsoft so i can go you know shoot a bunch of kids uh so <laughs> I uh, get airsoft uh, a little bit later this afternoon, and then uh, probably come back here uh, over the weekend. I'm going to shut the charging station off for now, so people can't just hijack the uh, the electricity because it's got like a little combo on it, and um, so I'll, I'll lock it up, but it doesn't have anything on top of it. So I'll probably put it like a trash bag or something, some tape. But uh, yeah, that's been my day, and I did get my my chest session out, which was great. Um, I feel like my left shoulder is finally starting to come back again. It's not definitely not full capacity but i was able to get a really good uh pump in and uh good uh chest shoulders and triceps today so i'm happy with that and i feel like i finally starting to hit some major strides on my on my uh, back so my back's been uh definitely blowing up which is great so a lot of good things cutting's going good down to 236 uh right now so down about 15 pounds or so since uh since we started the cut good. and um just chipping away every day, man. good like energy levels you know it's, it, it's interesting um you know, when you when you put on enough muscle mass uh, and you do a cut, you're not drastically cutting down calories. So it's a manageable set of calories. It's actually an enjoyable set of calories, I would say. Um, and uh, so I'm not starving. I still have lots of energy. And my body really isn't fighting me too much with um, with losing the weight. So I feel like my body finally trusts me that I know what I'm doing and that it's not fighting me along every single uh, path. Just took to 41 years. <laughs> Just uh, 41 years of having a horrible track record. Uh, and it's like, okay, I think you got this down. Your, your trainer knows what he's talking about. Just so. don't fuck it up. It's yeah, like, you got it. Right, I trust right, you. Right. Just don't fuck it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> so the um, the weight loss has been going really good. And the training blocks have actually been really good. I really like the, um, you know, we've been doing the uh, the chest and, and back split with <laughs> arms and uh, legs. And I really like that split. Um I, I think the chest and back is, I actually saw Sam Sulek talking about the same thing there. I was like, oh, okay, I'm doing what Sam's doing as well. So, but the, the chest and back. You're my buddy Sam. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you're my buddy Sam. I feel like I know him, uh, you know, but the, the chest and back, uh, shoulder, uh, full arms, and then legs day, I think has been a really good uh, split. And then obviously the kind of opposing, you're hitting them twice a week. So the opposing muscle groups, um, you know, so like, for example, you, you can, for legs, you would do more squat centric day, maybe a little bit of glutes and hammies. And then the next, next time it's heavy glutes and hammies, a little bit of, a little bit of quads. Uh, so you're hitting, you know, the muscle groups in, in multiple times a week, but you're not, you know, completely fatiguing them and tearing them up. So I think it's a good, good train block. I've definitely noticed some, some heavy successes with it. So I, uh, I will say I'm getting an itch to get a rest of my, my, my arms done from a sleeve perspective. I just, I just know. I, I know. I, like I told you. You're like, Aaron, no, no. I'm not going to let this happen. I just, I, I know I just, just yeah. like, this will be the last one that I get. This will be the last one that I go, yeah, right. Okay. Daryl. Well, I, I actually, feel like I will say that I have one here. I've got to like fill it up, you know, like <laughs> here. 
in you're talking to the right person. Like if you if you need someone yeah. to persuade you and to get the tattoo, I'm <laughs> I'm your man. You but, can persuade Aaron. It's like it's like your situation with Trish moving to the, to the states. You know, it's like if you can pull that know, one off, that like, yeah, tattoo yeah, yeah, will yeah. be no no problem. I must say the getting getting full 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 sleeves would probably be as as much of a monumental <laughs> hurdle if you move to the United States. So we'll see. you might have to move to Ar- Ireland. Yeah, I might like move to Ireland. Wait, 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 wait. The uh, <laughs> I actually here, I've actually thought. Um, the super secret stuff that we're doing with the new yeah. super deeper things that I sent, like that's in the pipeline for a tattoo for me soon. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, but it will idea. be revealed at some point. Um, okay. How things with me? Uh, good, good. There's something I want to speak about, and I was going to create a video on this, and I, I probably still will. But I had a bit of a realization in the gym one day this week. I'm going to say Tuesday, potentially maybe Wednesday. Um, I was frustrated at one of my lifts, and I like sort of sat there like pondering it a bit. And I think that this is a vital piece of information to share um, because I imagine people probably feel the same in some way. I've established that I'm not the biggest I've ever been. I'm not the leanest I've ever been. I'm not the strongest I've ever been. I'm not the fittest I've ever been. I'm not the most consistent that I've ever been when it comes to training and my health. And I can understand how that it did frustrate me. And I can understand just zoning in on those things. I could feel like I'm not progressing, but I sat in the gym and sort of zoomed down and everything and right, okay, well, what other areas of my life have I progressed in? My business is growing beyond any of my ever expectations and is in the best position it's ever been in. I'm now obviously growing the team and have the team involved, which is a position that I've never been in. I feel like my time management and fitting everything in and my routine after sitting down and doing that at the end of last year is that like, I feel like I'm managing my days and my weeks the best that I ever have. I'm spending more time with Harper hanging out with her, so my relationship with her is the best it's ever been. So while I'm maybe not in the best position I've ever been in terms of my physique, and one thing I will add, like mentally and how I sort of the, my ability to focus on what I'm doing because I believe in the mission that we're trying to achieve, but also the work that I've been doing with Kira in terms of mindset stuff, like in terms of my mindset, I feel like I'm in the strongest place I've ever been. So potentially not in the position in the best position I've ever been in terms of how I look and feel and strengthen in the gym, but in the grand scheme of things, there are many other factors that I have definitely progressed massively in. That being said, I do want to make it a huge focus to get into better shape um, and get get back to a level of I am actually in the best shape. I am actually the leanest. I am actually the biggest. I am actually the strongest. I think now that I have nailed the timing of things and nailed the routine, it has allowed me to sort of be more consistent with my training and get everything in. So it took that sort of like spinning too many plates shit show to bring it back down to a normal level, reestablish what my routine looks like, sort of put myself as a priority in my days first. Um, so that's that was my realization. But I think that that's something important to share because I think that so oftentimes people can look at me or you or somebody who's in my position or our position and think, oh, it's, you know, they've got all their shit together. It's like, I lost my shit on Tuesday in the gym. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I should be like, I was doing RDLs and I couldn't do. I think it was like 300 pounds. I think you could do like 450 pounds in this shit. Um, so yeah, that was my realization. That was my observation. Well, and, and the funny, funny part about all this is that, you know, you are focusing on being well-rounded altogether, right? Yeah. Um, and I think when, when you're in the gym all the time, there is a, a, a almost obsession with that. And you're, you're probably in it a little bit too much. Um, and there's, there's a balance of all of the above. Right. And, you know, it's, it's funny. Cause, uh, it's been like three weeks. So I did a 600 pound deadlift. And since then I haven't even come close to hitting a 600 pound deadlift. Like it just hasn't felt like it's been there. Right. But just the other day I was doing more, more 505s and I did 505s for five. And that felt like I was finally getting back into the swing of things. So it'll come back quick, you know, is, is the thing. Um, but I, I would disagree that you're not the biggest that you've ever been. I think, you know, you, you are, progressing muscle mass wise and not moving backwards the strength may not be there yeah for for it'll be interesting to see because obviously i'm sort of trying to cut coming into phoenix and then this morning i was 214 pounds and i think about the last time i really cut down for the shoot um i would need to go back and look to see what weight i was then so it'll be interesting to see like where i'm at when i'm actually leaning and be able to have that comparison but i i guess in answer to what you've just said, 
I'm not as far as I could have been if my physique had been my main focus. But I think right. I've come to the conclusion that that's okay. Like, I think that the biggest thing for me is when I started coaching, I felt like that was my business card in a sense. Like how I looked was my business card. Like I felt like I had to look a certain way. So I put a lot of value into that. But I think you're right. Like I'm, I'm trying to have well-rounded like life. And I think that that's more of a flex in terms of, you know, this is my business card. This is what I now teach is like how you can have it all essentially, like how you can be in shape, how you can have time with your family, how you can run a business. And it's that to me is more valuable now than what I sort of value before. You know, today, today at the gym, uh, I was working out and, uh, it was, I did chest. So I, would, I didn't do my chest back splits. My, we, we spin off because of, um, travel. So I did, uh, chest, uh, tri triceps and shoulders. And, um, and, uh, you know, normally that type of exercise, if it was old, Dave would have taken me probably about an hour and a half to two hours just to spend the amount of time on there. Right. I was in and out in 45 minutes and it was a phenomenal workout. Uh, I mean, I was, I was gassed. I had no more. No more left in my muscles in my chest, shoulders, and triceps. They were completely locked up, right? Um, and, you know, you can do things more efficiently, just differently, and maybe not spending as much time. You know, I think the, the whole powerlifting thing takes so much time to go and do for, from a strength perspective because you have to have so much, so much interval in between, mm -hmm. you know, what you lift. So, like, if I'm lifting super heavy, especially if it's like a deadlift, you know, and I'm going heavy on that, I usually have like a five, five to 10 minute. That's in itself doing your deadlift is 45 minutes. Yeah. Now you're getting your whole session yeah. done in 45 minutes. Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. And you know, in that, and so it's an hour by the time I'm done with my deadlifts and then I have another hour of just burning out the muscle then. And it's just like, mm -hmm. you, know, you look at it and you say, well, what's my objectives and goals? And yes, I want to get stronger. So, you know, maybe I dedicate one day to heavy deadlifts, but I may not progress as much as I did, but I'm still hitting the muscle mass size that I need because I'm still fatiguing the heck out of the muscles. So, it's just the balance of finding what works for you, I think, um, in your lifestyle, but it's still being consistent with it. And that's one thing that, you know, you haven't really faltered on in any way is being consistent with it, right? I mean, you're still going, you're still getting, getting the work in and you're still, you know, taking the time, which is the, the patterns, the behavior, the, you know, the, the, the lifestyle that, that we have doesn't change. It's just a matter of, of how deep do we go into it to get, you know, that last little bit of, of percentage of, of increase. Right. And, uh, you know, it's, it's funny cause you know, I think we all go through, through the phases of it's not, you know, working as well as we anticipate, or we're not focusing much in it, but then, you know, we start to cut up a little bit and we're five pounds heavier from a muscle mass perspective. We're like, okay, yeah. it, was, it was worth it. Right. Yeah. It's just, it's just that I probably am in that in between phase as well. I was actually talking to it with uh, Brian earlier on, cause he's moving into his first like maintenance and then surplus phase. And I was like, you're going to get to the point where it's like, it's it's a mind game because it's like okay right i did all this work to get lean and now i'm doing what seems like even more work and i feel like i'm just progressively looking worse because i'm in a surplus and i'm i can't see the same muscle definition I'm, yes i know i'm getting stronger but my measurements are going up my weight's going up which is the thing that i've been focused on for so long and i'm like i literally feel like i'm looking worse because you can't see the, the muscle definition because you're adding sort of but um body fat along the way so i feel like i'm i'm on the way back down from that but i'm not at the stage where i'm like all oh, right i'm actually i'm actually lean now so i've got i think we're four and a half weeks out until phoenix um so i think i'll be in a good spot for phoenix like we're good yeah, i gotta start booking my flights for that so uh, yes you do time. i mean i know i said to you yesterday like there's no rush in this but like just at least let me you're gonna be there <laughs> and i'm gonna be there for sure yeah no, I, just, I actually uh, had the uh so we had the call today um just probably about, uh two hours ago um so i strategically dropped the u.s tour after movie if you haven't watched it take 20 minutes of your day and watch it that's how you post it was good um it was good it was awesome ran really nailed it to be fair um but it sort of created a little bit of hype around the event coming up and obviously i think like the last event was in september which was like five months ago so i feel like people feel like they haven't had it in a while because there was so many back to back um so it's good and on my end i'm just like finishing touches to everybody uh or everything sorry um and just just getting everything in line um many many secret things stuff that you do not know stuff that probably stuff that i don't even know actually to be honest um <laughs> in just terms of putting it together but i think i am beyond excited for this for so many reasons because number one obviously the size and scale number two the amount of new faces that there's going to be number three the entire team is going to be there and um, i'll include you in, in the team obviously me you adam travis lorraine is going to be there sean's going to be there 
Kier is going to be there. So there will be a broad spectrum of everybody that we have now brought together as the WeHack Health team. So it's like getting them in person because obviously everybody has seen them on calls. Everybody's interacted with them. So getting them hands-on is obviously going to be a little bit different and sort of bringing, essentially bringing them into our world as much as possible. Um, and then just, like I said, a few other bits that, that have planned. But um, I feel like I established that at the Belfast event that the events is something that I really enjoy doing, like bringing everybody together and like going the, like just putting the work in to have the details and the extra bits to make sure that everybody has a good time. So I'm looking forward to, to pulling it off. I don't know, like, I don't know what it looks like for anything beyond 50 people, but we'll cross that bridge when the time comes. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about the event. I think it's going to be uh, an amazing time. You always plan really great stuff. And, you know, obviously from what I know about it, there's going to be some, some great surprises there, but, uh, uh, I'll come together, and I can't you wait. You don't even know half of it, I, I, I'm excited. I'm, I'm surprised you're keeping secrets from me, but that's fine. You know, it's fine. I honestly like. I have honestly got to the stage that I, I know that some people know some things, but I'm at the point now where I'm like, I'm just not telling anybody anything anymore because I don't want to come to you and say something. You'd be like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm like, I'm just no, nobody's getting to know anything until we get there. I actually almost give. I was on the call earlier on. They were talking about the Airbnbs and. Uh, Obviously, everybody wants to know where they're staying, but I like the like, we'll just find out whenever we turn up. And I, I nearly give it away by saying how many people were staying in each one. I was like, you'd be able to find that in Airbnb, no problem. So I just stopped right there. <laughs> and you know, but, you know, we're very, we're a very creative bunch. So yes, they would have turned around yes, yeah, yeah. exactly, exactly. Uh, yeah. But no, I'm looking forward to that. That's sort of my main focus. Of the I'm actually going out. Uh, I'm actually flying out to Phoenix, and this is a reminder for me to you that we're going to need to catch up on some podcasts between now and then because I'm going to be gone for a time. Um, I'm flying out on the 16th, and I'm going to the... Remember last year, we just happened to Sobe in Phoenix at the same time? Who knew, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm going to be there from the 16th uh, at a conference. I'm going to do some in-person coaching. I'm going to hopefully speak at the event. Then I'm flying back to you, to Cleveland, um, for a couple of days. We'll get to record a podcast there. I think me, you, and Travis should record one in person, yeah, potentially in your gym or in his gym. Um, and then we'll get that done because I think it'd be good to have him on. And then I'm obviously flying back to Phoenix. And I don't know if you're coming with me at that point or you're coming a couple of days after, but that's the plan. So I think I'm probably 17, 18 days uh, in the US. Yeah, it's gonna, that's going to be a long time. I mean, you might as well just live here. I'm just saying. I, I actually have booked... To come back, me and Matt are coming back for something that, again, I can't tell anybody about. Uh, on the 25th of March, I come home on the I come home on the 5th of March, and then I'm back on the 25th of March, literally three weeks later. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure Kay's very happy about that. Ooh, I, yeah, and I have, so I, I'll tell you, well, I guess I'll tell everybody this. So I get back on the 5th, then Matt's event is in Edinburgh on the 12th and 13th. And then there's a, he's speaking at an event in London on the 21st and 22nd and then i leave in the 25th again so pretty much march gone not home gone yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's usually like my september october time yeah. is usually when i have those but i think the yeah. thing is and i mentioned this earlier on it's like if if someone says to you are you free on this date for this thing you look at that date and you go yeah i am free but you don't take into consideration like oh i've only been back for a day or i'm going i'm going somewhere yeah. the day after that's the problem i have it's like I, I, you know you look at your schedule and like the longevity or the the whole the whole picture like oh man what did i do yeah. and you, you don't realize it when you're, you're like oh that week's open we're good that week's yeah. open we're good and then it, you know yeah I, I i do that all the time it's one of my biggest pet peeves that i mess up all the time that i never correct by the way yeah, yeah. still not correct. Too, too, too. excuse me man but, uh, well, before we get into the two things, I wanted to kick off two quick studies that I thought were really interesting. Um, one of them was, and, and it makes sense when you think about it, but when you first hear it, you're like, what? It doesn't make any sense. But there was an extremely large study uh, with over 40 million adults in the U.S. I'm sorry, it was over 40 million adults in the U.S. that have hearing loss, but they did a, a large study um, on hearing loss and longevity. Now, interesting enough, hearing aids look to boost your overall longevity. Okay. Hearing aids, if, if they're used consistently and regularly. Now, why would you think that would be? Now, what would be the correlation to hearing aids? I mean, hearing to me doesn't sound like it's something that would increase your lifespan. But when you tie it into this specific thing, it, it makes sense. No idea. Right. That's what I would think too. So it, think about it. if you can't hear anything, 
you can't socialize, so you get more social isolation. Yeah. Thus leading to depression, thus leading to cognitive okay, decline. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting, sure. huh? Yeah. 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 Now, I thought that was that was uh, an interesting tie-in, but they showed it with the data, you know, behind it. And I'll just read you this quick one. This is from NPR, but there was a number of um, ones published on this. But uh, among 40 million adults in the United States who have hearing loss, most don't use hearing aids. Uh, this means they may be missing out on more than just good hearing. Research shows hearing loss, if left untreated, can increase the risk of uh, uh, frail frailty, uh, falls, social isolation, depression, and cognitive decline. One study from the scientists of John Hopkins University found that even people with mild hearing loss doubled the risk of dementia. A new study finds that restoring hearing loss with hearing aids may uh, lengthen people's lives. Dr. Janet Choi, uh, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, an otolaryngologist with Keck uh, Medicine of USC, uh, wanted to evaluate whether restoring hearing and uh, with hearing aids may increase the chances of living longer. Using the data from the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey, a large study, national study, Cohen uh, and her colleagues uh, tracked the status of nearly 1,900 adults who had been shown to have hearing loss during screenings. The participants completed questionnaires about their use of hearing, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, the group of patients who were, hearing, uh, who who were using hearing aids regularly had a 24% lower risk of mortality compared to the group who never used hearing aids. 24%. It's a pretty big number right there. So, mm -hmm. so it's not you know, necessarily about the hearing aids. It's about the social aspect, the social aspect, but also like, you know, uh, hearing things around you, like, uh, maybe getting hit by a car yeah, you know, yeah, that's yeah. talking at you or, yeah. you know, just your surroundings or your fra frailty. Um, you know, not being able to understand what's going on, but yes, the, the social aspect of it too, you know, risk of dementia, you know, doubled in, in, in cases. So, you know, those are the things that I thought was kind of interesting with that study that, you know, you wouldn't think hearing would be associated to living longer, but you know, I know I, I have selective hearing. My wife's talking to me sometimes, so, you know, I, I probably need to pay attention more on that. But, uh, you know, hearing aids, if you start to lose your hearing, probably a good idea if you have, you know, mild, even mild hearing loss. Yeah, yeah, very good. Now, the second study, which I thought you would love, um, is, and, and me as well, I've been doing this a ton more, is a certain type of superfood that is like, it, it, what the, this, this uh, article says, is like a suit of armor for longevity. So the and I, I was like, ah, shut up. This is this is a bunch is it, of BS. Is it blueberries? It is blueberries. Nice. It is yeah, blueberries. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. The holy grail of longevity foods. This doctor eats every day. It protects you like a suit of armor. So this is from uh, CNBC, uh, and they uh, interviewed a longevity expert. Um, and I will find his name here in just a second. Um, but Dr. Neil Palvin wrote this this article. Uh, as a longevity researcher and regenerative medicine doctor, so this is from uh, Dr. Neil, um, with more than 20 years of, of helping people and healthy habits to live longer, blueberries are one of the foods I eat every day to promote longevity. One, they are tasty, low in calories, and filled with vitamins and antioxidants that protect your body from infection like a suit of armor. Here's why I consider them the holy grail of longevity boost. One, they strengthen your cells. Antioxidants help defend healthy cells, prevent further damage, and are involved in the process that repair DNA. Two, they are great for your eyesight. One cup of blueberries contains 16% of the daily value of vitamin C, which is known to boost eye health. Number three, they boost muscle recovery, which is what I thought was most important. Um, research is ongoing, but blueberries have been found to reduce muscle damage and soreness. The vitamin C in berries also promote iron absorption and increase the production of collagen, the tissue that connects your bones and muscles. They boost your brain health, number four. Um, along with the physical benefits, studies have found that the antioxidants in blueberries could also affect your areas of the brain that are crucial for intelligence. That's why we're so smart here, Ben. Yes. Number five, they reduce inflammation. Research has shown that fiber, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants in blueberries can help reduce inflammation and additional risk factors for type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. Uh, six, they lower cholesterol. Since blueberries are high in soluble fiber, they help remove the bile in our guts, as well as the fatty, uh, fatty acids, salts, metals, and Bill, 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 there we go. A substance created for breaking down of blood, red blood cells. Man, that took me some time. Anyways, so I'm lots of benefits. Not to blueberries today. <laughs> Man, there's a couple, couple, a couple of zingers in there. Bill Rubin, Bill Rubin, and something like that. Anyways, I thought it was kind of two interesting articles that uh, uh, one hearing aid I wouldn't have suggested to to live longer, mm. and blueberries seems to be the. Are you just googling problem. like things that will help me live longer, and it came up hearing aids and blueberries? No. <laughs> no, I'm looking at looking at medical research. That usually, like I look at like like the latest NIH research papers yeah, that yeah. come out, and you know, but this one popped up on my feed. I have like yeah, uh, Google alerts 
okay. for, for like new things that come up and, and these two kind of popped up and they're interesting for me. I usually stay away from like the big, you know, like business insider or big news organizations. Cause they're usually like hyper, you know, like focused and not necessarily breaking down, but I thought these are two really good mm. articles that had a lot of good data to support it. Um, which Plus is why blueberries are delicious. Blueberries are amazing. And I would say yeah. blueberry muffin would be my favorite type of muffin. I don't think that that counts. I mean, it's got good. maybe a little bit of blueberries in it, but the rest of that's going to be all sugar, carbs. Listen, listen, it doesn't say specifically how you need to ingest them. Like, as long as you're getting them it's in, true. right? It sure doesn't say you need to be using a raw blueberry blueberries. muffin. It, and I'll digress on the, the blueberry muffins here. Um, a great pre workout meal, a blueberry muffin. It is actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, it's funny. Um, yeah, ben used to, to tell me all the time that his post workout meal um, was always uh, cocoa pebbles. Yeah. Cocoa and I was just like, over here, but yeah. Cocoa Puffs, whatever the heck. But I was like, yeah, you're crazy. That's that's so dumb. And then I saw Sam Sulik do it and Chris Bumstead do it. And I'm like, son of a bitch, he's right again. You know? <laughs> I, I, there must be so many times you just like are looking at something. You're like, damn it. Like, just, I'm like, damn it. This is like exactly what he said like four years ago. I'm like, this is not right. Like, you know, you're spot on. So yeah. keep keep proving me wrong here. So so what did I buy yesterday at the at, at the at the Door market? Pebbles? Cocoa Pebbles. Nice, nice. Oh, my God. I got to do is I got to hide them because my kids, like, uh, if I ever buy, it's like, you know, Fairlife has the, the chocolate milk and the regular whole milk and stuff like that, mm-hmm. which is less in sugar, more in protein. I get the um, chocolate milk Fairlife sometimes. And uh, I got to be careful. And I have to, like, hide it in the bottom and, like, put stuff around it or my kids <laughs> completely devour it. So yesterday, there is the empty Fairlife chocolate milk sitting in, the, in, in, you know, in the, the recycle. I didn't have one drink of it, not one. <laughs> it was gone before I could even even get a get a handle on it. So you know, I got to be careful with those. But yeah, you need to get a secret, secret fridge somewhere. Yeah, I need to get a secret fridge. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. I'm going to do a secret <laughs> fridge. Good. Right. Well, today I want to talk about what the fuck is going on with We Have Health because I posted a post yesterday, and I realize I've been quite quiet on socials about the whole thing. But I have spent probably the past three and a half months um, doing stuff in the background to sort of give a more value to listeners, followers of the community, essentially. Um, and my, my biggest goal for this year is I want to give away as much value as possible because I realize, you know, the more resources we have, the more the more it's going to benefit people longer term. So I put a tweet out yesterday with a couple of like bits and pieces that I put together. One of them is that you were involved in the seven day hack your health webinar series. Um, that to me was allowing me to introduce the team to who they are and what they do. Because obviously I know people have spent the past 128 weeks listening to me and you, uh, and obviously we're in the position now that we're trying to expand and bring other people in other experts. Um, some of them have been on the podcast. You will know some of them, but essentially everybody created a a short webinar, I say short, you asked me how long yours needed to be and I said 15 minutes and then 32 minutes later, I was still listening to you on it. But mine was the same, I did mine last just to make sure I had got everything covered. Um, I think mine's about 30 minutes as well. Um, so the day one is me just hacking your health, introduction to we hack health, uh, what the four pillars of success are, how to start and sort of actionable tips. Then Travis takes the next one and um, the art of programming. So basically breaks down goal setting, being realistic, um, how to put your program together to be efficient and effective in terms of what the equipment you have. Uh, Kira did the mindset optimizer. Um, again, tools that I have done one on one with her, and tools that she has used within the the monthly expert calls. So I'm not giving anybody anything here that I don't use or have used in the past myself. Um, Adam did one on the balance hack. So basically, how to balance working in cybersecurity and actually managing your physique overall. Uh, Lorena did a mobility movement mobility and movement mastery class. Um, it was quite cool because what we sort of spoke about for her is like building out a mobility routine at your desk. So you physically do not have to go anywhere else. And one thing she talks about is like how you can start to build up imbalances, like sort of tightness through your chest and your shoulders coming forward, which creates weakness in your upper back. So it's like how you, what you can do, number one, what the detriment to that is long term, but number two, what you can do literally at your desk to combat those things. Um, Sean talks a little bit about breath work and holding space for higher performance. And then this guy, Dave Kennedy, just talks about his journey. And, no idea who that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, we wrapped it up with Dave right at the end. I think that that's going to be the hook. Like you have to listen to all six of us before you actually get to hear what Dave has to say. So um, I was cool. It'd be cool to sort of see what feedback is on that. And obviously I would imagine this isn't going to be the last one that we did, uh, that we do, sorry. Um, but yeah, that's one thing that's going on. 
The second thing is not another productivity guide. I called it um, because I feel like sometimes reading productivity guide, reading productivity guides is a form of procrastination in itself. But I think the biggest thing that I hear people talk about is they struggle with time. And I think what I hear in that is they're not utilizing the time that they have doing the things as much as possible. And the only reason that I say that is because if you had have asked me last year, was I at capacity with my workload? I probably would have told you yes. I'm probably three times that capacity now with everything that's going on. And again, I would probably still tell you, yes, I'm at capacity. Um, so I've just basically given the things that I have done over time, things I've added in the tools that I've used, the sort of techniques that I have used. Um, I stole the Matt, whenever he came on to speak, he talked about the environmental audit. Um, so I created that as like an actionable, like a usable document that people can use to sort of audit their environment to make sure they have the best space to get the work done. Um, and I gave the people what they want and I give them my list of supplements that help me be productive throughout the day, because I think that that's all that people will really want within it. And the final one is basically a whole human diagnostics report. Um, I spent some time putting together, I think it's maybe seven or eight different categories from energy, digestion, um, health, sleep, productivity, routine. Um, I basically built out a questionnaire um, that obviously scores you along you go and you get a report at the end of it based on how well, you, how basically overall what your score is in each of them and then how well you do in each section and then tips on how you can how you can improve them, um, which I think would be cool. I was sort of toying with the idea of trying to, I think it's 51 questions in total and I was like, ah, oh, people might answer that. But I think given the my knowledge of the people that I work with, they want more data and they want more information. So they're happy to spend a little bit extra time answering the questions to get the, to get the information at the end. So they are all available. Um, I think the link is just BC training bc.training slash links um and the full list of them is there but i'll drop it in the show notes anyway just as resources for for everybody to use i think it's really awesome that you're able to put together all these different um different classes you know different types of oh my god i got a fly i've got a fly attacking me right now <laughs> um but i think it's cool that you're able to put together all of these different um you know videos for everybody so that you can kind of look at the areas of expertise that I think you've expanded in, right, um, within your team and the capabilities that, you know, a lot of these folks really bring to the table and um, really get that out to everybody and, you know, provide a lot of that knowledge to to the general masses, which I think is is super important. It's areas that, you know, I, I enjoyed, like, you know, the, the breathing techniques and, you know, the mobility uh, components that, that, you know, I, I was always like, ah, mobility, just everybody talks about that. It's total BS, but I tell you, I've noticed my, my deadlifts, my squats, everything getting better, my back, um, you know, mobility has a huge impact in literally almost everything we do. So, you know, really cool that, uh, that's all come on. And, and obviously, you know, the, the journey for what I did, uh, and kind of how I started off with this with you and, um, how that's impacted me, my, not, not, not just physically, aesthetically, you know, everything else, but, but also, you know, mentally, uh, brain power wise and what I've been able to accomplish, you know, both of my businesses, I think has been, or all my businesses, I should say, uh, now that I have like more than two, I have like six. Um, but even know, that, like being able, being able to manage six businesses and six companies is no joke. Do you know what I mean? Like having right. the capacity to and, do it. And being able to be dedicated to my fitness and mm -hmm. my health and, and everything else. I actually have a uh, Subway sandwich here sitting, uh, waiting for me to eat. I have, it's the first thing I've eaten today other than a bagel this morning for my pre-workout. Um, so I'm going at three o'clock PM. I have a lot of calories I need to eat, but I did eat, um, uh, 90 grams of protein, uh, nice. for my, my, my shake this morning. So, you know, and, but I still have like 20 or 2,200 calories to go. Uh, you know, this so this journey is real hard, isn't it? With 2,200 calories. So hard, let me tell you, <laughs> so hard. It, like, I will tell you, you know, it, and that's one thing I reflected on the, on the video which, which was like my relationship with food has mm -hmm. completely changed. Right. And I think that's the biggest thing to, to note that I think almost everybody struggles with in this journey is that, you know, food is so damn good. And mm -hmm. we get, we get so uh, wrapped up in, in having to feel full all the time mm -hmm. or close to it. And when you, when you realize that you're, you're going to be just fine, not being full all the time, like your mind changes and that, that obsession, that addiction or whatever you want to call it, uh, kind of goes away. And it's interesting, like, you know, there'll be times where I'm like hungry, right. And there's times when I'm starving and I need to eat. Right. 
But most of the time, I'm like, eh, I really don't feel like eating. I got to kind of force myself to eat um, because I'm not paying attention to it, right? And, and that's why I think calorie counting is really important because, you know, you need to make sure, you know, you're getting the right, you know, type of, of, of macro breakdowns and most specifically your protein, you know, i.e. not to lose muscle. But, you know, for me, it's like a completely different relationship with food. Like, I don't care about portion size. You know, I don't care about, I thought I turned those off. Damn it. Um, the little bubbles are popping up. Um, but I, you know, I don't care about those specific things. What I, what I do care about is making sure I hit my protein goals. And there's times at night where I'm like, shoot, I'm like 60, 60 grams of protein short. So I'm going to pound, you know, a couple, uh, you know, either a protein shake and, and on top of that, you know, a couple, you know, Greek yogurts. And I'm like, I just don't want to eat anymore. Um, you know, to, you know, Hey, I hit my protein goal halfway through the day and I don't really have to worry about eating anymore. Right. I can just eat whatever the heck I want. So, you know, it's, it's such a different journey and a different, uh, mindset that I have with food. And it's funny. Cause I remember it, it changed for me. Like I still get folks that are like, Hey, what's your favorite, you know, flavored protein that tastes like, you know, a vanilla chocolate shake or, you know, like, you know, like a, a cake, cake battered filled, you know, whatever, like, you know, have you tried any of those that are, I'm like, I don't care about the flavor. Like, I don't care. You know, is, is, if, it, if it doesn't make me gag, it's good. You know, like, and so I use the same protein that I've been using for three years. I use the same pre-workout that I've been using for the past three years. I'm not trying a bunch of new ones. Every once in a while, when a new one comes out, I'll try it just to see if it, you know, has any type of effect. But, you know, like, I'm kind of stuck in, in the sense of, like, it, it's fine the way it is. I don't need new flavors of food. I don't need new flavors of protein chicks. I don't need new flavors of whatever. I don't need to go get a huge, you know, strawberry sundae once a week to reward myself or whatever. It's, it's, it's like, Hey, the family's going out for ice cream. Do you want to go? I'm like, I could go for it. I can't, but if I, I want to enjoy time with my family, I'm going to go grab, you know, an ice cream and I'm going to fit it within my macros. And I'm going to be good. Right. It's not like I'm Jones in to go out and get a, you know, an ice cream sundae. I don't care about that. Um, you know, I don't care getting, going to fast food and getting an Arby's, you know, uh, although they are delicious. Arby's, Arby's roast beef is delicious. Uh, a lot of, a lot of protein in that too, which is great. True. true, true. Um, Lots of lots of meats, um, but I would say but, that the, the thing about it yeah. is like, and I think that this is where I guess this is what I'm trying to do in terms of expand that because I think we can't say that we have health is about looking after the whole human and then just always talk about fucking training and nutrition. Like I think that yeah. while the nutrition is a big part of it, the bigger part of that is your relationship with nutrition. So it's like yes, yep. okay, you know, everybody knows the foods that they shouldn't shouldn't eat, but it's the it's the relationship you have with those foods and that to me is a mindset thing. Like it's working on your mindset to know. And I think we talked about this. Um, I think it was on the, on a call on Monday, potentially. Um, there were, no, maybe it was a call on Wednesday. We always call Wednesday. So we had a couple of new, new folks on. It was their first call. And uh, I was asking anybody, did they have any tips? And someone mentioned about eating the same foods every single day. And I mean, to me, if you eat the same foods every day, you don't, it doesn't really matter to me, but I am a fan of like being pretty consistent with the types of foods that I eat or the foods that I eat because a lot of reasons, because mainly I know how those foods specifically are going to make me feel. So, you know, if I have the same breakfast, I have the same pre-workout meal, I have the same lunch, whatever it is, I know how those are going to make me feel. But I know that a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I would get bored of that. And I'm like, the boring stuff for me is the stuff that allows you to be successful long-term. And I did a bit of a rant about it today in this sort of check-in feedback video about the basics. Everybody's so keen to find the new thing, the new fancy thing, the the latest fad, the latest fucking perfect extra way to set up an exercise. I'm like, if you have not nailed the basics, none of this shit matters. Like the basic, right. most boring, unsexy stuff, if you do that consistently, repeatedly for a long period of time, that is the thing that will allow you to progress the fastest for the longest because it is simple. And I think that that's one thing that people don't believe what it is. And Jason asked, or Justin, sorry, asked me a couple of weeks ago. He was like, can you create, or what, what do you say? Or can you create a video on what it is that we actually do? Because people are asking him like how he's lost all the weight or what he's doing. And he tells them what we do in terms of just track your food, hit your calories and hit your protein target. And they're like, they almost don't believe him as if yeah. we're keeping some sort of mad secrets. I'm like, the, yeah. that is the secret. Like the secret that's is the secret. do the boring shit yeah. on repeat for as long as you possibly can. And that's where the progress will come. Yeah. And I, I think the, um, it, 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 we've talked about this many times, but it's, it's not just one thing. That's a culmination of a lot of, of habits that get formed when you start to do this type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And, that's when you start looking at the whole body of everything, right? Your mindset, uh, you know, how you approach things. Uh, 
you know, there's a study on, on negativity in your life and how it has a, a massive impact on, you know, your, your longevity, just like cutting out the bullshit and, and focusing on positive, you know, reinforcement and having a community of folks that are, you know, in the same type of tribe as you, which we've talked about before, you know, many times on the podcast, you know, it's, it's those, those cultural shifts, I think that make a big difference. Your, your habits that you start to form, getting away from the bad ones, focusing more on good that make those, those more consistent. And, you know, I always say I can keep this up for the rest of my life right now. It doesn't mean I'm going to be deadlifting 600 pounds for the rest of my life, but it means that I can stay with the same type of habits, you know, healthy lifestyle and habits that, you know, regardless of where I want to go with it, whether it's focusing two hours in the gym or focusing an hour, 45 minutes, but it's still the same habits. I'm going to be producing, you know, benefits for myself on all of this. So, you know, I think, um, we I have a question on that. Yeah. So again, I went a bit of a rant today. No, maybe not a rant, but probably just more managing expectations than anything else. And I'd be keen to hear your thoughts on it because I feel like you're, you're at the other side of what I'm going to talk about. So I think there comes a time in your journey that it gets more difficult. So obviously, if we're talking about a fat loss journey at the start, it's quite easy in terms of the progress happens fast. So you can be tuned into it. The hard bit of that is you're establishing new routines and behaviors, but you're almost highly motivated because of the thing that's driven you to do it or the news that you've had from the doctor or whatever the thing is that made you change. So you're driven by that and you see the progress happen quite quickly. There comes a stage where you have made the progress. So you're not like in immediate need to make any more progress. So things start to slow down, but also you've lost all of the weight. So the weight is now harder to lose because there is less of it. So it becomes more difficult. Do you think that difficulty continues or do you think you see the other side of it where it's like, okay, right, I've done the start bit where it's relatively easy to see progress, but hard to sort of manage the habits. Then you manage the habits, the progress is hard. And then the other side of it's where it's like, okay, I know how my body responds to things. I know that if I do this day in, day out, that I will get progress. Yeah, I think I think you start to come through the the tough the tough spots eventually, especially when you have enough muscle mass to be able to kind of contour your body the way you want to, or or have it go the way you want to, because because you have the right habits, right? Um, you know, I will say that that you know you always hear about like the newbie gains, mm -hmm. you know, thing is much faster than, and that's one of the things I've noticed is I don't gain as much muscle as I used to, um, as fast as I would like to, right? Um, and so. You know, when you look at that, you start to slow down a bit, but I'm still making progress. I'm still challenging myself. I'm still doing the right things. I look great. I feel great. I'm, I'm focusing on all the right things. So, you know, it, I, I think it becomes easier for sure once you have the habits established and you get past that, right? Um, I think the problem that I struggled with when I first lost all this weight is I didn't have the physique that I wanted to yet, right? So I was, I, I, I had a win, but it wasn't the win that I needed to yet. Um, and once I got through kind of the, getting a little bit uncomfortable with gaining weight again and then dropping it down slowly. You know, it was, it was a, a, say a mild cut, right? Um, mild bulk, mild cut. But then, you know, understanding the benefits of that and having the control and then the second time going through a much larger one and, and being in control the whole time, you know, I think that's when, you know, my mind completely went at ease. Like, I'm like, I got this. Like, you know, like whatever. You know, so it's, it's almost then, it's, it's just the, the, the thing, the bit that comes after that then is the evidence. Type. So, so in my head, the journey is it's hard at the start to build the habits, but it's easy to see the progress. It then becomes yeah. hard to stay on it because you're not seeing progress as quickly and progress, and progress becomes more difficult, yeah. but you go yeah. through a different few different phases and you have the evidence that you know that it works. And I think a lot of things right. that I'm seeing with people at the minute is they're in a position that they have never been in before um, and they never even probably yeah. thought was possible. So whether it is in terms of their strength or whether it is in terms of the physique or the amount of weight that they lost. And they're almost so far detached from what their original like motivation to make the change was that they don't really know where the fuck to go from that point. And I think that that, that is the piece that's missing because it's like you have, a, you have a great reason why to start, but then whenever you're you know, six months in or a year in or even 18 months in, you're not as attached to that why, so it can be hard to sort of stay focused. But you also are not at the point where you have the evidence to know that you can fully trust this is the thing that you can do long term and manage the progress on either side. Yep, absolutely right. I think you nailed it spot on. Good, easy. Not my first day. I will say <laughs> as well, we are about two weeks out from my ten year anniversary of the first day that I ever walked into the gym. Like it was this is either the wow. fourth, the third, the fourth, or maybe the seventh. I'm gonna say the fourth of February. That's awesome. 
I am I am like six weeks away from uh, going on vacation, and my wife had reminded me that not not nearly as a ten year anniversary here, but. My wife had reminded me that it's time for me to start tanning. I said, listen, screw all this tanning stuff. I'm just going to get a spray tan. That's it. I'm going to deal with it. So Good. spray tan for the win. Yeah. <laughs> follow us Follow us for, for more grooming tips. <laughs> cool. Right. Well, anyway. All those links, I'll drop them in the thing that they're there as resources. If anybody thinks of anything that they want me to do and build out, like that's what I'm going to say. My focus is going to be for at least the next six months, just building resources. I think the nutrition one will be a, a, a good one. Um, and getting a better understanding that it's just something that will take time to actually put it together. And as I sort of said before, like my goal with this year is, is to start to build out the team and put more experts in place. Cause I realize I'm, you know, there are people who are better at their jobs and I'm starting to recognize my own strengths within coaching. And I actually had a call, uh, yesterday with everybody. And I was like, like, why are you here? Like, what do you need from me specifically? Not like the check-in, but like, what can I do sure. to give you more of me? Because yeah there only is one version of me like it's only me so it's like what what can i bring that's the unique selling point essentially um so yep. more of me happening in the coaching and then more of other people coming in as experts so stay tuned for that if you want to be a part of it the links are all there you know what to do awesome well another good week another good podcast mm -hmm. um we'll get another one in next week but mm -hmm. uh, thanks everybody for tuning in and catching up with what's going on with ben and dave this week so uh thank you all appreciate it and uh we'll catch you again next week see you next week